The way of many empires, no matter the size of their lands, lead through Antolia. In fact, a few had appointed capitals in Antolia due to its geographical structure and strategic importance. Amongst these, there is such an empire that stood up to three big civilizations that ruled the world thousands of years ago with its military force, advanced legal system, a unique language, and written archival buildings. They wrote their name into the history books with golden letters, the Hittites. During the second millennium BC, the Hittites spread into central Anatolia with successive invasions, expanded their domains over time, and dominated the lands of Haitian princes. Bever the Hittites, which would take the culture and even the name of the Haitians, came to these lands, the marketplace Karum, which was founded by the Assyrian merchants, and was called Hattusha, became a long-term settlement until Anita, king of Nasha, burned it down and cursed it in the years of 1750 BC. It took Hattusha in one night with my power and sowed weeds on the grounds of the city. Whoever will become king from now on and settles in Hattusha shall be cursed by the god of the storm. But because of the geographical structure that made it impossible for the region to be conquered by its enemies, the first Hittite king, Hattusili I, didn't listen to his ancestor, Anita 100 years later, and preferred to make it his capital again. And thus the story of the unique capital Hattusha began. So what was on this land on which you are about to step thousands of years ago? About four times the size of the Vatican, or almost the same area as Monaco, Hattusha was basically divided into two, downtown and uptown. Great Fortress, located at the point where both parts of the capital can be seen. It is also emphasized that the king and the rulers, which were in dominant position over the people in downtown, were close to the temple district in uptown and thus close to the gods, which added a divine power to their ruling. The city walls with a high symbolic value and a great importance in terms of defense were built at the steep edges of the deep straits in the east and west and surround the capital with an approximate length of seven kilometers. The gates on the walls in Uptown, however, are each a symbol of Hattusha. The monumental Yurkapa in the south consisting of a soil set which is 30 meters high, 250 meters long, and 80 meters wide, has been built to continue the transition from the steep slopes and the Sphinx Gate with its sphinxes looking to both sides on this structure is very impressive. The Lion Gate with lion sculptures on the outer face in the southwest and the King Gate with an armed god in the southeast are with their high towers and arched structures the most magnificent buildings on the uptown walls. The fact that the wooden wings of the gates were closed and sealed in the evening and were only opened after it was officially determined that the seals weren't broken in the morning could be understand from the written instructions of the king to his attendants that they were found. There are eight pathways, in other words tunnels, under the walls that divide downtown from uptown that may have been an escape gate a pathway that leads behind the enemy or a surveillance space. The only tunnel that is walkable today is under the Yerkapi and didn't serve for the military purposes we told you about, but more for monumental and ceremonial purposes and will take you back thousands of years ago. The Hittite Empire was ruled from the palace, Kombuyuk Kale, or Great Fortress, placed on the highest rock plateau of Hattusha. The place was taken under protection against internal attacks with walls facing downtown and walls in the east despite the steep rocks was also strengthened against external attacks. At the entrance of the palace, one had to pass a viaduct that started from a plateau opposite from the great fortress and ended in the first yard of the palace. This structure was most likely built for the king so that he could pass through with his horse and carriage. 
Although there is no clear information about the functions of the buildings, it was understood from the instruction text of the soldiers in charge of protecting the king that the first courtyard of the palace was open to the public, and the second courtyard, distinguished by a large door, could only be passed by some officers. It is understood that this courtyard contains the written archives building, which is the most important cultural treasure that Hattusha added to human history, some administrative structures, as well as the king's place of acceptance. Since the buildings in this northwest of the yard overlook the whole city, it is thought that the king and his family lived here. The part of the capital that was used as settlement during the Karum period and before is described as downtown. The biggest structure complex of Hattusha, the Great Temple, and the Hittite houses are also located in this area. Even if the Great Temple resembles other Hittite temples, the existence of two sacred chambers arranged parallel to each other is unique to this structure. Although there is no written explanatory document, it makes sense to think that in these two cult rooms, they worship the two most important gods of the Hittites. The Storm of God of the city Hattusha and the Sun Goddess of the city Ariana. On the other hand, the hundreds of large cubes buried in the basin in the storage room surrounding the temple describe the economic function of the temple. The solid food produced by the workers working on behalf of the temple such as grains and legumes or liquid provisions such as wine and oil were kept in these cubes. Uptown, which consists of sacred places and official buildings, is a place where important examples clearly distinguish Hattusha from other Hittite cities. The temple district in the middle of Uptown, which resembles a large natural bowl, consists of 28 temples. These constructions are the most prominent examples of the Hittites' unique development of temple architecture. A monumental entrance, a large open-topped inner courtyard, a fine front gallery carried by roof poles, and sacred rooms. The temples don't face any particular direction, they are built in accordance with the topography. The water basins placed in different sizes in natural terraces both in southwest and east of Temple District and the grain warehouses near the tunneled walls allowed the development of an effective method against the ever-present drought hazard. They were an important element for the king, who kept the power of the food source in his hand to strengthen his central government. Yazilakaya, located about two kilometers northeast of Hattusha, is an important sanctuary of the Hittites and the Hittite capital, who call themselves people of a thousand gods. Yazilakaya, which is in a unique position in the Hittite world, with a natural rock being turned into a temple, is a magnificent structure with its reliefs in rooms A and B. This open-air temple, especially used for the New Year celebrations in spring, with wall reliefs telling that the king became one of the gods after his coronation, shows not only the religious meaning of Yazilakaya, but has also an important place for the legitimacy of the Hittite kings. There are many mysteries awaiting discovery in the capital, which is equipped with monumental structures with important functions for providing the power of the state where the craftsmen and workshop, merchants and warehouses, farmers and planning areas, soldiers protecting the city and barracks. Since no grave structures were found, where did the Hittites bury their dead? Most importantly, where were the hundreds of horses belonging to the horse carts kept, which changed the center of gravity and gave the Hittites the power to make a treaty with Egypt? the biggest power of the period that said that the two parties are equal and ensure long-term peace. The Hittite Empire signing the Treaty of Kadesh, a very important legacy that Anatolia has added to the history of world diplomacy, disappeared suddenly in the years 1200 BC and has been erased from all archaeological findings. How did this happen? Research revealed that the unique capital, Hattusha, was burned. But no items with any vital presence were found in the city. Thus, historians think that the capital was empty before the Great Fire.
The fact that there was no signs of military attack in the excavations proves that the empire had lost power, left the city, and burned it afterwards. Who knows, perhaps the Hittites, who rebelled against the curse of their ancestors and signed their name into history with golden letter, thought that only they could bring down their empire, that they had built after they had begun to lose power. This seems to be more fitting for such an empire that ruled the world.